dear Nigerians, October 1st remains a sufficient date for all Nigerians as this marks the day when we attain one of the most precious of human desires, freedom. Over the years, the country has gone through trials and tribulations, but October 1st is always a day for celebrations. It is a day for thanksgiving, reflection, and rededication. It is also a day for remembrance. We should remind ourselves of the recent journey from 1999 to 2015, when our country happily returned to democratic rule. However, in spite of oil prices being an average of 100 United States dollars per barrel and about 2.1 million barrels a day, that great piece of luck was squandered and the country's social and physical infrastructure neglected. We are left with no savings and huge infrastructure deficit. The APC government's campaign, rallying cry to restore security, rebalance the economy, and fight corruption was not all rhetoric. The country must first be secured. The economy must be rebalanced so that we do not depend on oil alone. We must fight corruption which is Nigeria's number one enemy. Our administration is tackling these tasks in earnest. In the past two years, Nigeria has recorded appreciable gains in political freedom. A political party at the center, losing elections of state governor, national assembly seat, and even state assemblies to the opposition parties is new to Nigeria. Added to this are complete freedom to associate, to hold, and disseminate opinions. Such developments clearly attest to the country's growing political development. But like all freedoms, this is often to abuse. Recent calls on restructuring quite proper in a legitimate debate, has let in highly irresponsible groups to call for the dismemberment of the country. We cannot and we will not allow such advocacy. As a younger officer, I took part from the beginning to the end in our tragic civil war costing about two million lives resulting in fearful destruction and untold suffering. Those who are agitating for a rerun were not born by 1967 and have no idea of the horrendous consequences of the civil conflict which we went through. I am very disappointed that the responsible leaders of these communities do not warn their hot-headed youth what the country went through. Those who were there should tell those who were not there the consequences of such folly. At all events, proper dialogue and any desired constitutional changes should take place in a rational manner as the national and these are the proper and legal fora for national debate, not some lopsided, undemocratic body with predetermined set of objectives. Government is keeping up the momentum of dialogue with stakeholders in the Niger Delta to keep the peace. We intend to address genuine grievances of the communities. Government is grateful to the responsible leadership of those communities and will pursue lasting peace in the Niger Delta. On security, 
Nigerians must be grateful to our gallant armed forces for rolling back the frontiers of Boko Haram's terrorism, defeating them and reducing them to cowardly attacks on soft and vulnerable targets. Nigeria is grateful to its neighbors and the international community for the collective efforts to defeat this worldwide menace of terrorism. Not even the most organized and most equipped police and security forces in the world can escape the menace of modern day terrorism as we have seen in recent years in Europe and other parts of the world. But we are not letting up. Our armed forces, in an effort to enhance the operational capability of troops of Operation Lafia Dole, have established mobile strike teams in the northeast. These will ensure the final push to wipe out the remnants of Boko Haram. In addition, through targeted air strikes, most of the leadership and identified logistic bases and routes of the insurgents have been neutralized. The armed forces have established a naval presence in the Lake Chad Basin as part of the coordinated military efforts to curtail the movements or re-emergence of the sect in the area. Government is working around the clock to ensure release of the remaining Chibok girls, as well as other persons in Boko Haram captivity. Government will continue to support the armed forces and the other security agencies to fight not only terrorism, but kidnapping, armed robberies, hard men farmers' violence, and to ensure peace, stability, and security in our country. With respect to the economy, the government has remained proactive in its diversification policy. The Federal Government Agricultural Anchor Borrowers Program, which I launched in November 2015, has been an outstanding success, with 43.92 billion naira released through the Central Bank of Nigeria and 13 participating institutions. 200,000 smallholder farmers from 29 states of the Federation benefiting. 233,000 hectares of farmland cultivating eight commodities, namely rice, wheat, maize, cotton, soya beans, poultry, cassava, and groundnuts, in addition to fish farming. These initiatives have been undertaken in close collaboration with the states. I wish to commend the efforts of the governors of Kebbi, Lagos, Ibonyi, and Jigawa states for their support to the rice and fertilizer revolutions. Equally commendable are contributions of the governors of Ondo, Edo, Delta, Imo, Cross River, Benue, Ogun, Kaduna, and Vleto State for their support for the Prudential Initiative for farm oil, rubber, cashew, cassava, potatoes, and other crops. With the abundance of rainfall last year and this year, agriculture has enjoyed divine intervention. Since December last year, this administration has produced over 7 million 50 kilogram bags of fertilizer. 11 blending plants with a capacity of 2.1 million metric tons have been reactivated. We have saved 150 million United States dollars in foreign exchange and 60 billion naira in subsidy. Fertilizer prices have dropped 
from 13,000 Naira for a 50 kilogram bag to 5,500 Naira. Furthermore, a new presidential initiative is starting with each state of the Federation creating a minimum of 10,000 jobs for unemployed youth, again with the aid of central banks development finance initiatives. FAWA remains a huge program. As of September 12th, production of FAWA reached an all-time high of 7,001 megawatts. Government is increasing its investment, clearing up the operational and financial logjam, bedeviling the industry. We hope to reach 10,000 megawatts by the year 2020. Key priorities including better energy mix through solar and hydro technologies. I am glad to say that after many years of limbo, Mambila Power Project has taken off. Elsewhere in the economy, the sufficient window created for manufacturers, investors, and exporters foreign exchange requirements has proved very effective. Since April, about 7 billion United States dollars has come through this window alone. The main effect of these policies is improved confidence in the economy and better investment sentiments. The country has recorded seven consecutive months of lower inflation. Naira rate is beginning to stabilize, appreciating from 525 Naira by one United States dollar in February this year to 360 Naira today. Broad-based economic growth is leading us out of recession. Furthermore, in order to stabilize the quality, the federal government gave additional support to states in the form of state excess crude account loans, budget support facility, stabilization fund release to state and local government as follows, 200 billion Naira in 2015, 441 billion Naira in 2016, 1 trillion Naira in 2017, altogether 1.642 trillion Naira. This was done to enable states to pay outstanding salaries, pensions, and small business suppliers who had been all but crippled over the years. In addition, the government's current 500 billion Naira sufficient intervention program is targeting groups through homegrown school feeding program and power job creation to provide loans to small scale traders and artisans, conditional cash transfer, family homes fund, and social housing scheme. Fellow Nigerians, we are fully aware that fighting corruption was never going to be a straightforward task. We expected corrupt elements to use any weapon to fight back, mainly judicial obstruction and political diversion. But we are determined to eradicate corruption from our body politic. In this fight, the government has empowered teams of prosecutors, assembled detailed databases, accelerated the recovery of stolen funds. The administration's new institutional reforms include enforcing Treasury single account, whistleblowers policy, integrity payroll personnel and information system. We have signed multilateral cooperation agreements on criminal matters with friendly countries. There are signs of increasing cooperation from the judiciary. 
Recently, the Chief Justice of the Federation directed heads of all our courts of first instance and appeal to accelerate hearings of corruption cases and dismiss any judicial officers found to have been compromised. Justice Salami has just been appointed to chair the Judiciary's Anti-Graft Committee. Government expect a lot from this committee. I commend the National Assembly for refocusing on its oversight committees. They should, in addition, ensure a swift passage of enabling corruption laws. But fighting corruption is a bottom-to-top operation. I call on all Nigerians to combat corruption at every time by not asking for and refusing to accept a bribe, by reporting unethical practices or by blowing a whistle. Together we can beat corruption. The government for its part will work for accountability at all levels, federal, state and local governments. Change will then be real. As we enter second half of our term, of office, we intend to accelerate progress and intensify our resolve to fix the country's challenges and problems. Thank you and a happy holiday to all of you. God bless our country.